you ever get that loud humming in your ear and it just like makes your tear ducts bleed? I get that. I'm getting that right now. It's like it hurts, but it's a satisfying pain. This is Newspeak with David Goad, and I've got Evan Jarvix, or you can just call him Jarvix, on the show. And, uh, he's, a, he's a musician friend of mine. He's a poet, artist in many capacities. He's a writer. He writes, which means he's literate. That's a plus in my book. Uh, you walk into... I'm posing, you know, hypothetical question. So you walk into a building. There's a very large, empty interior space, like where you feel and where you think at that moment. I'm gonna walk into a building. A building. A With building. A large interior space. A large interior space. How does that space make you feel? Yeah. Um, I I like large spaces in buildings for for sure. Um, it can be anything from a cathedral or like a warehouse, for instance. Um, I think it's, uh, I don't know, there's something kind of soothing about it to me. Um, yeah. I don't know, I'm not claustrophobic or anything, but I, uh, I like, I think, I think space is a very important thing um, that you're not always aware of until it's too small. Designed buildings, um, I think, can sometimes be obvious, like with the cathedral, where it's very clearly um, designed to give you a certain effect. Um, but there's some places that I think are a little more subconscious, a little more subtle. Um, regardless, I think I think there's something about an internal space that taps into sort of a psyche, and you know, anything from the lighting in that space or the acoustics of that space lends itself to a certain feeling. Um, I, I like big empty spaces, but I can imagine it's not a universal thing and it just depends because some big empty spaces can feel more like a void perhaps rather than, I don't know, I think it just depends. Um, Perhaps that emptiness would be analogous to like a kind of loneliness. Yeah, I was actually thinking about um, Citizen Kane. There's a yeah. lot of, uh, you know, they, they make a really <clears throat> big point to show these big empty spaces in this mansion that he has that's locked away from everyone. Perhaps the cavernousness of his inner space, right. if you will. But I feel like that if it were a different character, you know, um, if it were a character who were perhaps more satisfied and content with himself, I can see all of those spaces being, you know, kind of more like a palace um, where it's comfortable and uh, the emptiness is not necessarily a reflection of something that's missing, but just of potential of what can be, perhaps. Yeah. So, it, I don't know. I think I think a person brings something to the space and helps uh, define what that space could be, perhaps. Don't lie to the poor beast. 
through your holes behind closed doors no northern star will try to guide you or impose the darkness touch you as you are but it will take you it will take you Yeah, you know, you have art pieces that are um, minimalist in their nature for the same reason. Yes, we, right. For speaking plainly, minimalism, like Walter Gropius was the architecture for the Bauhaus School in Weimar in 1919 was when he founded that. And, um, you know, he took a lot of tenets from Taoism into building the structure. And so you have, um, you know, areas where... You know, there's that potential because of the space and he really seemed to understand the potentiality of, of inner space you know, right. to, to not clutter it, to leave it as a way of maybe gaining harmony with oneself or with the space or with nature you know. right. but um, <clears throat> you know with closeness if you go into an area that's maybe a bit closer a bit tighter I mean, do you feel like an intimacy? I mean, there would be, I think, maybe more objects or something. Sure. I mean, I, I guess I kind of feel the same way about it, where it, it just kind of depends on, you know, what that space is like, how it may characterize yourself. It's There's a, there's a lot of range um, with space beyond just, you know, large and small. So it's a, it's a deep topic. <laughs> Can I just say, thanks for having me on the show. Oh yes, well you're very welcome. I didn't say that, I should have said that. Well, I'm, I'm glad you did, because if you didn't, I'd have to poison your root beer. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm drinking a root beer. There's also a root beer kind of syrup, by the way. A little bit. Um, I doubt far it. surpassing the, uh, the depth of knowledge of um, Sam Elliott's character from a certain movie. Uh, <laughs> So if you, if you had to choose a structure, which one would you prefer? Would you prefer like a cathedral, a bank, a skyscraper, maybe a shack? Hmm. And then why? Right, yeah. There's there's a lot of great structures out there. Um you know a repurposed cathedral would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, um there's a there's a couple of churches around the city that have kind of been hosts to like music and things of that nature. There's there's a place in Norman called the Chouse. It's no cathedral, it's just a church, but it's nice. It's like you just go in there and all of the oppression of religion is kind of gone from it when I go in there, at least. I imagine some folks may still feel that there, but I mean it's you know just a space now. But it's it still retains what are meant to be positive characteristics, and then it's more repurposed towards a community. Um, one thing I was thinking about as we've been talking about this is, like, <clears throat> the worst building has probably got to be like a prison, right? Yeah. Because those are meant to be like the exact opposite of what we're talking about as far as, you know... It's supposed to feel oppressive. Like yeah, that. yeah. Um, and, you know, there's not a lot of natural lighting, you know, no... Uh, few windows, you know, the acoustics of those spaces are very, you know, uh, metallic and loud. Uh, so, yeah, I think, you know, um, jails are meant to, you know, wall you off from the world. Yeah. And I think they're successful at that, for the most part. For the most part. Would you call it a good building? I don't know. 
you know, the history of the building plays into that as well. People built that, like some guy, yeah. you know, who's the bricklayer, has a family, you know, he laid the brick for that. He's, you know, by proxy, through action, a kind of part of the building. And so does that does it make him bad too, you know? But it, it's it's the I guess the feeling that would abuse their environment as well as what they receive back. It's kind of like a feedback loop. Feedback loop's a great way to put it. Yeah. 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 Like you enter a space, <clears throat> it gives you an impression on on what that space is about. And mm-hmm. so you, your mind then you know, fixates your perception of the place based on that and so it becomes the loop then. Yeah. Because then you're inclined to feel a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. building would my music be? I guess most, most folks, if they know my music, know me for my looping pedal work, uh, which is inherently structured and based on a an initial fixed loop. So, something with maybe some, a lot of repetition involved. I don't know why I'm being drawn to a pyramid right now, yeah. but for some reason, a pyramid feels kind of... Is that how you, you usually work the songs? Like, especially live, you start with maybe the biggest... Uh, broadest layer. The same sure. broadest yeah, layer. Yeah, certainly. And then work into smaller details. Mm-hmm. Maybe a pair of the Yeah, you generally build something around sort of a, a rhythmic motif of some sort. And then just find ways with subsequent loops to sort of bring new angles to that. In which case, maybe a pyramid is in that. I don't know. That's a hard one. I'll, I'll, I'll go with the specific pyramid, um, the, uh, the I am page, the, the loop. Let's go with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah.